<laughs> All right. You. All right, guys. We are going to be starting here shortly. If you guys are paying attention, I am uh, Brian Metzger. I'll be your host tonight, and uh, just taking a look at the stats to see where we are, and just to make sure that uh, everything's good to go. So hang tight and uh, get ready for the show. All right, Mr. McKinnon. Do you? Welcome, everybody. This is Brian Metzger with Empowered Ecom. I'm glad you are here. Uh, we're getting ready to start here. I'm actually on the chat with McKinnon, and uh, we're in different locations. And uh, he's with us. He's having issues with his camera. But uh, welcome. I'm excited you guys are here. I put together a nice uh, sort of a mind map and uh, a simple agenda just to show you what uh, we have going on here. Uh, which is basically the fruits of the efforts and probably the years of working in e-commerce and affiliate marketing, but it's all in the same. It's basically taking advantage of this large e-commerce market and using our capabilities to uh, have a piece of it. I mean, that's really the, the main idea. So hold on here for a second. And uh, McKinnon says he can see us, but his camera's not on. So if that's not the case, then what we'll do is we will just have to um, just have me host it. So how are you guys doing? I want you to uh, take advantage of this. You can put in the into the chat. Um, this is a feature. This is actually what I'm using. It's called Webinar Jam. It's software that was built by Mike Filsame and Andy Jenkins. And it's really nice. It basically leverages Google Hangouts to put on a live webinar and then it also has these other features that we can look at chat engagement. I could even pull you guys if I wanted to. And uh, so it's a really nice feature. Um, and we're always looking at uh, you know, the tools to help us do our jobs better. So we're actually learning this tool and uh, learning all the cool in and outs. We've, we've test drove it once, um, but for the most part, it'll be good to go. So I just want to see chat's available, chat's working, the attendees are here. And uh, we should be good to go. So what I want to do is put this stuff down in the background and introduce myself. So my name is Brian Metzger, and I've been good friends with McKinnon for a long time. Uh, when he moved back to Bozeman, Montana, I actually was up here in Montana going to school. I was in grad school, as, uh, as McKinnon might have hinted in some of his emails, in uh, PhD in chemistry. Uh, we became good friends, and then he moved away to California. And I actually went to California. We went our separate ways. Uh, but we did sort of find each other again through our, uh, uh, my sister-in-law. And the, that's when I found out that McKinnon was doing e-commerce. Now, I was down in Silicon Valley, and I was doing uh, semiconductor industry, but I knew that the internet was taking off. I was there right at the beginning of uh, Netscape and eBay and even Pets.com and Webvan. So I saw the potential for the internet. Of course, uh, that was Web 1.0. And the uh, it was actually the telecommunications that blew that up because they thought that the internet was going to grow, uh, but it, it didn't grow as fast as they thought. So there was sort of that downfall. But in that process, McKinnon was chugging along. And uh, he was an innovator. And he was basically right in the beginning of e-commerce. So during that 2001-2002 uh, time frame, it was really the entrepreneurs like McKinnon that were leading the way in e-commerce. And as the, you know, obviously today, now everyone does it, and the innovation's amazing. But back then, you basically had to uh, do a lot of the stuff 
on your own. You had to build your own tools. You, you, the website was, you had to be very technical to get it up and running. And, um, but there wasn't a lot of competition. So it made for uh, probably a really good time <laughs> for everyone there. That was called the Internet Gold Rush. Current times, you have to be way uh, smarter. You have to be, you really have to know what you're doing because the, obviously the games are changing. And so I want to cover what I believe is a new philosophy for e-commerce and uh, it's really borrowed a lot from the affiliate marketers. But I believe that the e-commerce is, you know, in, in my opinion, is the caboose. But some of the things that I'm going to discuss on tonight's call will help you see what I think are, what we need to do as entrepreneurs to be relevant in this marketplace. And it isn't uh, very hard. We find our niche and we serve our customer base and it's going to be fine. All right? So let me uh, bring, uh, bring us up to speed. So when I went to the, like, an, I'm always staying connected with the what's working, what's happening right now at a lot of the internet marketing conferences. And so it was in 2010 that I attended an affiliate marketing conference and in that there's a lot of affiliate marketers but they were bloggers. They were affiliate marketing bloggers and what they couldn't do because the technical hurdle was they couldn't do data feeds because there's these large data feeds from you know large e-commerce stores but the ability to take that feed and put it into an e-commerce platform was, there was still a gap in that capability. So I, I saw that and that was actually a skill that uh, we had developed uh, working together. We had our ability to take a data feed of our site and we could push it to uh, the shopping channels and we could send our feed to Amazon, we can send our feed to eBay. So our core competency uh, that we developed with the, with the team and with the friends and with McKinnon and with, uh, he mentioned Kyle, Kyle's the programmer, we were able to understand data feeds really well. In the process, one of the sites that we worked on was taking um, not only feeds going in, but feeds going out. So that brings us to the to today's topic, which is the empowered ecom. What what I wanted to create with this was the ability to have anybody be able to play and use data feeds to to create an e-commerce store. And the reason that that's critical is because the data feeds can be updated, and so the pricing is updated, inventory can be updated. There's a lot of information in a data feed that makes it uh, makes your store relevant and, which I think is really important, automated. Meaning that you don't have to worry about um, price having to go in and update the price because if the feed is being dynamically inputted into your store then you don't have to worry about that. And that actually is a big deal. And I want to make that a point because the in the past, affiliate marketers, if they find that their site is outdated, they would have to go in and spend hours updating links, updating images, updating price. But if you can work with a data feed and your site is automated, then you don't have to worry about that. And here's the issue. If you don't update your site then and the links are not... Uh, they're not updated, they are what they call broken, that means that you are losing out on commissions. I mean, it's a big pain point. So that's the first thing. And I still think right now the affiliate network space is behind in terms of serving us as entrepreneurs and providing the right uh, type of feed and the right platform to make it work. And so I felt that need and that's one of the reasons that I built uh, Empowered Ecom. But before I demo it, what I want to do is I'm going to do a screen share and I want to go through the philosophy of uh, tonight's uh, conversation. And so if you have um, if you have anything that you've got distractions, you might want to put your phone away or, or shut down Facebook. They always say that. I always want to use that too because I really think if you listen to what I'm saying here, you don't even have to use what um, what I've created here in Empowered Ecom. What you can do is you can also uh, use this for any site. All the sites that McKinnon has shared in terms of uh, creating the WordPress sites. It's really a philosophy. It's it's a totally different type of strategy. And that's uh, really what I want to share with you today. So uh, get ready here. And let me just check uh, the chat, make sure that everything is working. Um, okay, so I'm seeing if there's some issues with uh, technical difficulties. Um, 
All right. I'll tell you what, guys. Um, it looks like there's technical difficulties. Uh, it always happens. What I'm going to do is I've, I have just put out a link that gets you to uh, try using that to see the Hangout. And I'm going to try again, so I'm going to reply. So hold on, guys. If you want, you can let me know if you guys can see it or if not. And also, McKinnon, if you're able to chat too, you can just see if this is all working on your end. Just make sure everything's going. Oh, I'm going to put. I'm going to do a sticky message. Sticky message keeps it up at the top, uh, so that you guys are able to see it. And I'll uh, wait a little bit. I know there's a delay of about a minute, so we have to wait for you guys to catch up, maybe to see uh, the information. So. Um, that being the case, why don't I get the screen um, shared over? All right. I'm going to do a screen share to the mind map. All right, all right. So it looks like you guys can see in here. That's always good. With the live, you know, McKinnon has always said he doesn't like the live webinar. He even said that in the email. He said, "Ah, I'm not a live webinar guy," and that's because it's it makes it real, right? You guys are having some fun. Um, all right, so you guys should be looking at the what I call the alpha leverage formula, and I'll explain what I believe is the alpha leverage formula to you guys for all of us to plan a strategy, and, and this will make sense. But one of the things that I want to do is I want to go over the math, because I think if you really think about the strategy as an internet marketer, let me just drag this up a little bit, is math is everything when it comes to understanding what you need to do and in terms of hit your numbers, right? And sometimes what happens is people fall, they fall in love with the site, they fall in love with the topic, or the target market, but the numbers aren't there. Uh, the traffic isn't there, and uh, so we'll cover that. But let me give you an example of, um, I'm gonna shut this. If you wanted to earn $1,000 a month, now I want to uh, have some disclosures. Amazon does not publish average affiliate earnings. So we really don't know what the average affiliate marketer is making. Statistically, I've heard, and I'll share this with you, that the um, an affiliate, or I'm sorry, a blogger, the average blogger makes less than a dollar a month. Okay, so, and I think that's primary because they go at it without really having an e-commerce plan, and so they don't, they don't, they don't really have any way to make money on their blog when they're first starting out, except for some banner ads. And and uh, I mean, if you have paid attention to Yahoo's um, recent uh, quarterly report, the they're having issues with the, you know making money off of banner ads. I mean, it's because there's a lot of inventory and not, uh, and so the prices that are still pretty low. All right, so let's go into the numbers here. So you can see that I would think that on average, people can at least hit the six and a half percent level in Amazon because they've left, they've got the bar set pretty low, uh, four sales, and then you're in to this level. Then, then there's this huge uh, gap between six and a half percent, six percent to like seven. I mean, you got to hit over a hundred orders. So, uh, so I would think that on average, most people are 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 not going to get over a hundred orders unless they really are playing the game. Uh, so, in that case, from our experience, McKinnon and I, long time doing e-commerce, I would say that our average order value, and that's what we sort of say it inside. So that's your average shopping cart value as an e-commerce player um, for our site was about $120. When Amazon during Christmas and the Amazon sales take off, 
the average order uh, that we see is, is less than $100. And that would make sense. If it's a lot of gifts, people are not, they're not going to be spending um, extravagantly on everyone on their Christmas list. So I would say that you're probably averaging $5 commission per order on your Amazon store. Okay, so if you just played it that way, you would then need about 200 orders per month. Now I went through my stores uh, and all my Amazon, so I'm sharing this with you. So I have a 12% conversion rate, and what that means is that for every visitor that goes through my affiliate link and lands on Amazon, 12 out of 100 make a purchase. Now they may not even purchase, and, and I'm sure you guys have seen this too, what they what is on your store. They end up buying something else. They throw it in their cart. Uh, and that's the benefit of the cookie that Amazon provides. Uh, but if you wanted to hit $1,000 a month side income, you would then need about 1,667 visitors to click uh, through your site each month. All right? So this is, I, I, in my mind, very uh, surface level, just the numbers, just to help you think about, all right, it's just a numbers game. So then I have to figure out how I'm going to get 1,667 visitors to, to come and click onto my website. And based on uh, the average of $5, that's, uh, you can say that's, that's a lot of traffic. So obviously you're going to want to increase your commissions, which means you're going to want to offer higher uh, priced items on your store. And that's why some of the affiliate uh, books or anything you read talks about blending uh, your products so that you have some low ticket items to drive volume uh, so you can hit a higher commission level and then some higher ticket items to get the bigger commissions. And then uh, what the nice thing about Amazon is that it's, it will basically go back and, and increase your commissions off of sales at the beginning of the month to match your final uh, number. So the months that I hit over 7%, everything becomes 7%. So it, it just rises uh, up. And so that's, that's sort of a nice thing. Uh, so a lot of people will drive low ticket products to uh, increase that. And that's a, that's a pretty standard strategy. Now, I want to go into the, the real internet marketers and the way that they think. Because this is the strategy that I want to share with you. It's a strategy that I'm moving forward with. And, and I want to and I want to basically uh, share it with you guys. The idea is that you obviously you, you want to have multiple items for sale. I mean that's a given. That's why we have an e-commerce store with a wide range of commissions. But you also want to have even higher ticket offers. One of the key things, and and this is a key point, is you never want to get in the way of the people that want to give money to you. Meaning that there might be some people that are willing to, to spend a thousand dollars on your store or even higher. So you do not want to basically prevent that from happening by not having those type of offers on your store. Um, so you want to have a high ticket. In fact, I would say that it, it just makes sense. I mean, there, even from an e-commerce standpoint, uh, you know, even one of the products that McKinnon and I have sold was a patio heater. And the patio heaters, sometimes they order eight of them. And these are $1,500 patio heaters at eight, so you could have an $11,000 order off of you know one product on your store. Um, it, the profits on that, it would take you hundreds of little teeny back massagers to make up for that. So you have to you have to really play the whole range of products. Okay. The other thing that I want to bring up is this whole point of a thousand loyal fans. And I really think that this is the strategy uh, that I'm trying to play a role in and help and educate is that the idea that you can create a simple affiliate site that has a product review on it and you sort of hit and run, it's, um, it's not a business. Uh, I'm going to call it, it's, you are not creating a long-standing asset that you can potentially sell to somebody else. But instead, if you create a site that is an authority site, and this is why you know McKinnon, I totally support the, what he's been talking about. When you create a site that everyone is, um, it, it provides the information. It's a resource. 
and you create a following, and, and that's that whole thing. I'll bring it up, and I want to go with a thousand loyal fans. That's all you need. These, these people are loyal to you. Uh, they love you because you've shared your personality, and you've, uh, you've just been real to them, and they'll, they'll support you, and that's really what you're going after. So here's the formula, guys, and this is, this is what I think makes uh, for a successful any type of business, obviously, but what I think on internet marketing what's very beneficial. One, you understand your market. So I'll be going in over here into the target market, and then how you position yourself and the value you provide. So that's the V equals EP. So we're going to go over positioning uh, a little bit, but the point is, is that you want to educate, you want to teach, you want to provide a lot of value in your content, and that will that'll keep people coming back. And that's I have not found any um, any other strategy that that really builds a loyal following, except for this this providing value and what they call results in advance. It's it's the only way to go. It, it lowers um, the barriers to selling because you've positioned yourself as an authority, and people trust, uh, you know, they trust the teachers, they trust the educators, and that is what uh, we want to focus on. So let me just check over here on chat. I it glanced over, I saw it still um, stops and starts constantly, as from Leslie. Okay. Well, just um, let me know if we're still having issues, and uh, we'll move on. So is there any questions? So I'll stop here and, and just I'll look for some feedback in terms of we've talked about the numbers, and then we've, we're moving into the formula and the strategy. So if there's any, any questions that, please let me know, and we, um, we can go from there. All right. So with the delay, I will I will basically go into the final thing of this while I look for some of the feedback from you guys is the lead generation, which is the traffic, how to get traffic. So if you understand your target market, you position yourself as an expert, and you put up a funnel that provides an ability to uh, build that relationship with your target market and monetize it in m multiple different ways. Uh, that is how you can build a, a really strong asset and a business online. And the thing is, is with traffic generation, it will always change, and there will be always new ways to get um, you know, new social networks, uh, you know, mobile apps, etc. So the, the goal is to be everywhere. All right, so that's the formula. And yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm just looking at the feedback. So I just want to make sure that uh, with the Hangout that we are uh, being able to transmit consistently enough. So I, I, you know, while I'm waiting for uh, some of you guys chat with this delay. Um, here, I'll, I'll go back to, yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, great. So here I am. I'm waiting for some uh, feedback. I can read uh, some of the stuff on chat. So I just wanted to um, wait for you guys to catch up a little bit. That's the one thing with the Google Hangout is the delay factor. So while we're doing that, what I want to do is get ready for uh, the next part, the strategy that we're going to go after for the affiliate. And then I'll just demo what I've come up with. All right? So. All right, so you can see me. So we've talked about the authority site, uh, how we want to position that, and we want to create valuable content, quality content. That's sort of the given. There's a tendency to try to make shortcuts and create barely low, you know, readable content 
and just to trick the, ser the search engines, and obviously that's not recommended. Uh, you're basically putting your best face out there. So you want to make sure that you're putting, uh, and you're serving the market, and you're putting together good content. Social networks uh, play a big role. There's a lot of people that are actually just playing with Facebook alone, creating their community of a thousand loyal people on Facebook. And then they are using uh, Facebook to link back to Amazon as well as uh, other types of ways to make, uh, make monetize that traffic. So it's really, um, it really makes sense to leverage Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the other social networks to find those thousand loyal people that uh, are in your market. And, and I think the other thing that's a little different from what you may read about is an exit path. The idea here is that if you can create a website that has an audience that's loyal, it's in an industry, so it's not really a product review site. It's an it's a it's a media property, and uh, and I think one of the things that McKinnon shared uh, was from some of our mentors was survival life. He shared that, and the idea with survival life was that you are serving uh, a market of people that are interested in um, you know basically living off the grid, uh, taking care of themselves in case of emergencies. You know they're prepping for the uh, all right, Leslie says, okay, now. Um, you're able to see um, that market, and you can serve that market, and they've created a huge sales funnel behind that. Uh, they shared during a recent uh, conference that I was at um, how they sold a credit card knife for $4, and they, they, they advertised that on Facebook. And then from that credit card knife, they then sold a newsletter. So their back-end sales funnel had a had a twenty dollar a month subscription, and right now with the people that are signing up after they purchase the credit card knife, and they also went to like a matchless uh, lighter thing, so they've had those two products, and then they they back end into an info product. So they use a physical product on the front end, and then they have a back end that's an informational product, and then they're able to bring in over four hundred thousand dollars a month profit off of the subscriptions and. And the average subscriber stay in about nine months uh, before they either decide um, that they want to buy something else for a while or you know, they lose interest or they're not reading it and, and getting the value out of it. So the, the exit path is something that uh, you really won't hear about from, the, from other affiliate marketers primarily because they're not really thinking about building an asset that they can sell. But I can tell you this, uh, what the, the conversations I had with um, Ezra Firestone, who's sort of does this e-commerce stuff, and Perry Belcher does e-commerce stuff, and even uh, Russell Brunson and Keith Baxter. These guys are big internet marketers. They're always talking about trading sites, selling sites, getting out, moving into a new one. So they really think about building businesses that then they can sell. So if you position yourself as, a, as an authority site with an e-commerce and with the information, then you're creating something that you can actually sell. Uh, you know, or five figures or even more, depending, of course, on, on the traffic and the revenue stream. So that's something that I think is part of the strategy that uh, we need to think about. So that being the case, we've talked about the authority site, adding the content, social influence. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, go through the demo. All right? I know that's, that's why we're here. And I'm going to... All right. Here we go. So we're going to shoot over to. Um, this is a demonstration of a a friend of mine, and I just threw together uh, a store for her, and her interest is in uh, personal development and books because she's got a back end of teaching people how to be an entrepreneur, and so her desire was. I, she wants to show all the uh, books and training materials that people can can learn from as they are building their business online. So this is just one example of how you can, can position a store. In this case, this is more of a, a resource for her, and it positions her and it brands her. So the uh, another example, which is just straight out creating a a target market of snow season. So this is a site that I threw together 
Uh, and so my target market for snow season sports is obviously teenage boys uh, age 14 and up that are just, they, they love snow. I, I, I find from my experience um, that women, you know, the average woman is, is not as interested in skiing and high performance as the teenage young man. So obviously my market there will be catering more towards uh, snowboarding. But I will show you how quickly you can use uh, the, the site to, to add products and to do whatever you want. So I want to go back to the idea of different ways to monetize your store. So we talked about obviously having a data feed from, in this case, Amazon. So Empowered Ecom can work with both eBay and uh, Amazon. And I just met with the VP at Wayfair. And who knows? We could probably, the, this, this platform can start to bring in even more merchants. So the members of Empowered Ecom will have a tremendous amount of choices. Obviously, they have a tremendous amount of choice right now with Amazon and eBay, but you could even get more specific uh, with other boutique merchants. And in fact, and this is something that McKinnon and I have talked about, you have to understand that Empowered Ecom, this, is, this has the roadmap to take you from an Amazon affiliate all the way up to full-blown e-commerce. It's just a matter of adding a couple extra features, which we've already built. They're, we're already using it. All we have to do is, as we build this market uh, of members in Empowered Ecom, is to find the people that are like, hey, I want to have access to um, the, the automation in the, uh, the dropship market that you guys have built. And so that's available in, um, in the roadmap for Empowered Ecom. So I want to give you here an overview. Obviously, you put in your logo. You can connect your social networks. You can add, in this case, I've, I've just put in one slider, but you can put in multiple sliders on this template. And you can uh, create articles. So it's, it basically has all the features of a blog. And then you can create your categories. And, and then you can have your banners. Uh, you know, obviously, these can link to other uh, affiliate programs. And you know, that's the goal is to leverage. The, the position of the banners are in what they call prime hotspot locations. So I've wanted to incorporate that. But the other thing that I've incorporated, which you may not, uh, let me see if I can't bring up an example. One of the features of a blog that's something that, um, I'm going to see if I can't find an example here, that Google likes is the idea of tagging. So one of the things that we wanted to do was we wanted to add the ability to add tags to the store. So um, I just haven't, I haven't found an example yet. But I'll show you in the back how you can actually add tags. I found that here's, here's my perspective on why Google loves WordPress blogs. They, the interlinking, the linking between uh, related posts, you have links all up and down, uh, all over a WordPress uh, site. So I want to take that same feature to Empowered Ecom so that there is no disadvantage of using um, a non-WordPress in the eyes of Google. Okay, so there's a there's all these links, and then there's the tagging capability. And uh, when I have an example here, um, it it adds more power for the organic uh, search results, and that's sort of what we're going after. And the next thing that is important is the ability to put a face to the site. Okay. So when you write an article, one of the things that we've connected to is we've added the ability to add Google Authority. So you have your uh, Google Plus tied in. And this is important for organic, uh, organic ranking because you basically are putting a name to your content. And Google prefers that. They, they love authority, and they like the fact that you're putting your name on it. And so we've added the ability to 
tie in what they call a gravatar so that you are putting a face out there and that, that helps you build a relationship with your audience. And in this case, the you know the article does that and you have basically a bio tied in. So you can write product reviews, you can add news, uh, you can add videos, uh, featured articles. There's a lot of things that you can do with Empowered Ecom. All right. Let's try. I just check chat. Just make sure that um, everyone can get on. With the attendees. All right. So that's an example of the front of the store. Let me show you what it's going to be like when you are managing the store. So you, you have the Empowered Ecom and members, and you just log in. Obviously, we have a very, uh, it's a dollar trial. I mean, we could do it free, but we just decided to charge a dollar to prevent spammers. I hope that makes sense to you guys because uh, if you, are, you guys all know how many fake Facebook accounts there are and how many fake Twitter accounts and how many fake YouTube accounts. And, and you, you just by creating a very, very tiny barrier to entry, you prevent people from uh, basically spamming your, your site. So that's why we didn't want to have free accounts. Uh, but we, we just put up a minor barrier. Actually, a social bookmarking site did the same thing. We just borrowed from them. So there is a trial. It's just a dollar to get started. So when you are on and signed up, you can then log in, and then you can uh, start your stores. In this case, I, I've got uh, several stores going. And so I logged into the back of the Snow Season Sports. So now we're on the back end. And this gives you an example of what you can do. The first thing is that I have the domain name Snow Season Sports, and I've, I've built this so that you can just put in that URL address, and then we are using the Amazon Cloud. And so the Amazon Cloud will then create the name servers. So you can basically go right to Snow Season Sports, you can see up here, and it just goes right to the site. Which that's ne not necessary. I mean, you can see uh, in the case of Brenda, uh, a friend of mine, we I don't really have a domain name for her, so that's how it will look for her. So there's no need necessarily to have a domain name. I have just done that in this case for Snow Season Sports. The other thing is that you can put in, and we have all the features to add. Um, the ability to do the homepage text. All right. One of the things that you can you can do is try to refresh um, your screen. If you're having issues with the video, uh, sometimes it it happens, and it's 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 Google. I mean, I remember on some of the webinars I've been on where they're like, just if if you're having issues with uh, not having the video, then sometimes it's best just to try to restart uh, to bring up the video uh, because it's just the way that it's streaming on. Uh, on Google and the YouTube, and sometimes it gets lost that way. Let's see if I can't find. What I'm going to do is uh, hang in there. I'm going to find it in in YouTube itself, so you can even watch it. Um, on YouTube. Oh, I can find it. So what I've done is I've 
I put the actual YouTube uh, video of this Hangout. So you can watch it directly on YouTube. If you're having issues with uh, the video, well, McKinnon, you're probably like laughing all the way, saying, ah, this is why you don't do live. Um, but I think that's what makes it fun to, uh, to actually make it uh, an interactive experience. Although you, I want to basically serve and make sure that everyone can, uh, is participating and is having that. So I'm going to post it to everyone that can, uh, that's attending, just to make sure everyone's getting the best service from us. So, all right. Here we go. So what I've done is I've posted the YouTube uh, link to you guys so you can watch it on YouTube if you want. And let me get back to the back end of Empowered Ecom. The Obviously, the market here is to not worry about the technical issues. So we've eliminated uh, any type of coding that would be required because all you have to do is uh, type in what you want and then press save at the bottom. Boom. And then if you can type a Word document, you can type text on your site. So we've made it very, uh, very easy to do. So this is the home page text, uh, store title, the description. In this case, my target market, of course, is I'm going after uh, snow, snow, snow sports stuff. You know, skis and and, and snowboards. If you wanted to have um, a subscription sign up an email newsletter sign up, you would put the code there. Uh, obviously, I don't have that set up on this site. But when I do, this is where I'm going to insert it. The other thing is for the ability to have Google like your store. Now, if you are creating an authority site and you are creating the quality content, there is no reason that you should fear using Google sitemaps and Google Webmaster tools. So in this case, I've had uh, the site verified by Google. So I can log in to Google Webmaster Tools and I can look at the traffic that I'm receiving and the keywords. In fact, this is probably now the only real way to know what type of keywords um, that you're based on your content that you're coming into your store. So I recommend it um, because we're not doing anything. Uh, we're, you know, it's above and board. We're creating an authority site and that's what Google wants. There are multiple themes you can choose for the layout, and it's just basically a radio button you just select. And so in this case, I've, I've selected an Etsy color theme for Snow Season Sports. Uh, you put in your Amazon information. This is the keys that allow you to communicate with Amazon. And what we've done is we've created a simple step-by-step -step link to teach you what you need to do to get this type of information uh, from your Amazon affiliate account. And you could do the same thing for eBay, but at this point, um, you know, I've got my hands full with everything on Amazon. I don't need eBay right now. And of course, uh, Plain and Simple Deals is an e-commerce store that I run, so I have obviously linked uh, Plain and Simple Deals feed to e-commerce stores so people can earn commissions if they sell my stuff. And actually, that's what I want to brings up a good point. If you think about it, what I'm creating here is an affiliate network. It's an ecosystem. So for you. When you're ready to create and become a merchant, you could be part of this network, and you can turn around, and your merchant product, your stuff, can be pulled into affiliate stores of other members. And so you can you can promote other people and get commissions, and then other people can promote your stuff and get commissions. I mean, this is the big vision that I have from Empowered Ecom, to really change uh, the game and to create the sort of co-op, in essence, where everyone is helping each other. Uh, you can see how easy it is to do Google Analytics. You just put in your Google Analytics information, uh, your Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and LinkedIn. It's just you know copy paste the URL address, uh, put in your blog URL address, and then you update. So those are the store details. And obviously, any new feature that we add, we'll have plenty of training on the back end. In terms of categories, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do categories. You can do, in this case, you can add 
just by clicking the button. And so I'm going to add snow sleds. Um, so you're going to see me type in this real time. And you can put in meta keywords and meta description and, and bottom text as well on this level page. Let me make sure we spell this the right way. And I'm going to capitalize snow. So there we go. So you just add it. So now I've added uh, the snow sleds. And you can move these categories around. Uh, it's just basically a drag and drop. So I can pull this up and I can move it around. And you'll see me. I'm just going to let's just put it up here. I'm going to put it underneath snowboarding. So you can move these categories around. And it's it's all compliant with every browser that you have out there. And you can just quickly just change categories. You can delete categories by pressing uh, the, that minus sign, and that, that will get rid of it. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the categories. And I wanted to demonstrate the um, category thing, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the cool thing you can do with uh, product edition. Now, in this case, I'm going to add Amazon products. And I've used a separate tool. And, and I, I'm not going to go through this tool, but it's available. Um, actually, you can't even see it on your screen. So it's a tool that allows me to pull the top 100 Amazon products. And in that process, I can add these Amazon products very quickly. So you're going to watch me. I'm going to go to Snow Sleds, which is the new category that I added. And I'm basically going to take a list of Amazon identification numbers, as known as ASINs. And other, other tools out there have the ability to do the same thing. So in this case, I just, I just selected a few, and then I can add them. And just in one button, I've now added, you know, you can add more. That's a batch mode. And and refer to the Snow Season Sport. There's sleds, category, and there are the products that were just added. So I wouldn't consider this a snow sled, but uh, sometimes Amazon can be uh, they don't have their categorization right, but in this case, it wouldn't it wouldn't be hard for me to move this product to a different category. It's just a back end technology. So that's just an example of how fast you can add products to your store. And you can do it in a couple ways. You can um, you can just pick from the list, and I'll show you an example. You can yeah, you know, I can do snow sleds. And then I'm going to select category. And I can search products in this way. And when the selection comes back, I, you can just, it's almost, you just point click and select the ones that you want to add to the category. And so in this case, I'd add these. I'd add some of the saucer sleds. Oh, boy, I'll add this, too. So you can just see I'm just clicking. And even this, uh, I mean, this is more of a inflatable. And then we can click on this, too. And we can pick the category snow sleds. And then we can just add those to the store. So there's different ways that you can add products, Amazon products. And obviously, if you're going for speed, then you want to go with the batch way. We built in um, a double check. And this is a cool feature because if you already have the product list on your store, this will find it and catch it and say, hey, you've already added it. No need to add it again. So it prevents duplication. It's a really nice feature. I know everyone that uses Pinterest would hope to have a, an you know, ability that when you pin things, you don't, you don't forget and you've already pinned it somewhere else. So it's a nice feature to have. The, so we've talked about the categories. We've talked about the products. And the banner ads are just controlled on their own little submenu under here, uh, manage ads. And we have four locations because we've looked at the comp to be compliant with Google. If you want to use AdSense, so if you wanted to put in your AdSense ID, and so we've, we've, we've taken away all the need to do code. You just put in your AdSense ID, and it's designed 
to work with this 720 by 90 space. And you can do that for the left, and you can do that for the right, and you can do it for the bottom. So these four locations um, are the maximum amount of AdSense space that you can have on a site. Uh, you can't you can't do more than four, basically for the user experience. Uh, but in this case, I've used a I haven't used AdSense on the site. I've used different uh, different products and different things I'm promoting. And actually, I want to show you something. Um, this is something I learned from Ryan Dice, and I want to uh, do something real quick. Make sure I have a ad blocker, and so I wanted to uh, check it off so that uh, you can see something. This okay, so this was sort of blocked uh, because I've got my brother. My brother said, "Put on an, an ad blocker," um, but it prevented this from being displayed. Ryan Dice talks about the ability to borrow credibility from other um, other big brands. And one of the ways you can do that is you can actually put in the top space a banner of a brand. And in this case, I, I just picked uh, Big Sky Montana uh, just for the, you know, my hometown. So you could do a Wells Fargo ad. You could do a Ford or Subaru ad. In fact, I think... On um, one of my sites, I don't have on this site, but on another one, I, I use, because it's serving the market of automobiles, I can use um, you know, Ford or General Motors or Chrysler or something like that, Toyota, Honda, and you just create sort of credibility. You borrow credibility from the other brand. So one of the strategies you can do with the top banner is just put something that's very trustworthy and leverage it. It's not an affiliate link at all. What it does is it just says, hey, you know, we are a legitimate authority site, okay? And that's controlled under, um, you know, the ads. Now, this slider, which is, I mean, if you want to have more than one, is controlled by uh, the home slider submenu. And so you can see if I wanted to add more sliders, I can um, just click the banner and, and upload. And then depending on where you want, you can send your slider links to uh, different locations. So we, we built that feature. This is not available on all the templates, but we did make it available on several of them. So you can uh, use that for your advantage, depending on how you wanted to do your site. So you we've pretty much covered the ability to write articles um, so you can produce content. And, and then, you know, through the training, I'll explain to you all the ways that you can syndicate this content all over the internet to drive traffic to your site. But the idea is that you are you want to make yourself a niche authority site. And I, I can't stress that uh, enough because if you just have products here and there's no content and there's no uh, social signals and there's no curation, uh, Google will just ignore you. In fact, that's probably why a lot of people that just create these thin sites and that's what they call it in the industry. They call it a thin site. There's no meat to it. <laughs> you know, that's what they say. There's no, you don't have any value. You're not adding any value to the consumer experience. And so Google, once they look at that, and if they see content and the content's been published elsewhere and it's not unique and it's not, um, there's no extra value, they'll, they'll basically just skip over your site and it will be lost in the ether. So the idea here is to add content. Now, Here's, it's not just about adding content. I put this so that this is the homepage of your site. This is my homepage. And so what you'll notice here is that when I add articles, it's here on the homepage. And when I add new products, it's here on the homepage. Meaning that there is new content that is being generated on the homepage. This is a benefit that Google likes. They want to see fresh content. And that's another reason why Google likes WordPress blogs, because the blogs are all about creating new content, fresh content, on a regular basis. So one of your ideas and your strategies, no matter what you do, is that you put together a, um, a plan to uh, put together content and put it on your site on a regular basis uh, and have, a, have what I call an editorial calendar on what you're going to produce so that you can... Um, you can just 
them because that's what real businesses do. Real businesses, um, you know, they follow the market that they're in and they want to stay up on it and they want to add value. And and obviously, as we move to a e-commerce site, you know, there's going to be new products that we have to talk about all the time. So that is the back-end demonstration, but I haven't talked about one thing. And I just want to check... Uh, if there's any questions, let me know. And it's just, um, I'm looking at the chat here. I'm just trying to understand exactly what's new and what is old. But If you have any any questions, you can let me know. The last thing that I wanted to touch upon is the ability to have an empowered e-com site for free. And what is another very effective way, of course, to drive business and to you know, help it grow is to provide a sort of shared incentive plan with with the members, meaning that if members share it just like um, you guys understand the affiliate process, you can actually earn commissions. And in this case, it's you're getting a commission off of the uh, subscription. So it's an ability for you to not only make money off of uh, your store, but if you, if you share it with other people, you can end up in a process where uh, you have affiliate commissions coming in from other Empowered Ecom members. So we've built that technology in place. So that gives you another incentive to uh, build the store. And uh, if you have people that are interested and want to learn more, you, you have another tool at your disposal that you can share with them, whether you want to do a shopper press site, a WordPress site, or if you feel that they would be better served with a, with a system that is just, um, in this case, non-technical. It's just. You just add the categories, no coding, no worrying about having to upload themes. You don't have to worry about the plugins, and you don't even have to worry about your hosting. And you don't have to worry about your domains. It's all taken care of. Uh, this is built on the Amazon cloud, so the the need to have a fast server is taken care of. You, we are basically on in the cloud on a a server network that's all over the world. So wherever your traffic's coming from, they're going to get the fastest uh, source. It's pretty, pretty amazing. The ability for an average person to know how to do it in Amazon Cloud and get a fast server would either be challenged on a technical standpoint, or it would, it would be very expensive. I mean, a dedicated server is going to run you at least $200 a month. And, and server speed is an issue. So uh, the, the, the host gator, host monster, cheap $6 shared accounts uh, actually could potentially hurt you because of your load speed and, and server outages and all these other issues that happen with that. I mean, host, host monster, host gator um, had several outages over the past six months that impacted people all over the place that were using them. So I think. Amazon Cloud went down once, and Netflix and Pinterest were not happy, and so I don't think it will ever happen again. Because Netflix and Pinterest, I know for sure, uh, use Amazon to, uh, for their service, like streaming or hosting all those images that Pinterest is uh, hosting. So uh, as you can see, they're thinking about speed and scalability, and, and we have to. All right. so. With that, we talked about the ability to manage stores. I mean, you can start with one store, or you can have, you know, you can have five stores, ten stores. I mean, at this point, uh, you know, it's really what you can manage. There's articles, there's categories, uh, adding the products. We talked about the, the ads, uh, even changing the slider if you want. And then, if you get tired and you want to just change uh, to a different template, uh, you just basically click a button, and you can then update the store. And you can see, in this case, as I update this, 
it's going to change. So I just switched it quickly to a new template. So you can see how easy that is. So if you, as we add more templates to the back end, you can try different things out. And it's basically just a new skin on top of the database. So that's how easy it is to change it up and to try new things and have multiple sites and they all look a little different because you can use a different template. And I think um, I think the last thing just to, to mention is the the experience and the well, the plan for EmpowerDecom goes beyond affiliate Amazon stores. It's it really is um, about providing the uh, and leveraging my experience in terms of creating an e-commerce platform that you can automate and you can run and it doesn't take up a lot of time because you don't have to worry about the servers, you don't have to worry about the software, you don't have to worry about is the Amazon uh, products updated correctly. We've taken away a lot of those um, anxious questions that people may have and so what we're trying to do is make sure that you can focus on great content, creating a great consumer experience, and and basically monetize your passion and the the market. For example, since I'm into snow season sports, you know it's a passion of mine. But another store that I have um, that it's a it's a little niche market. We didn't talk about that. Is uh, I play tennis, and I know that uh, women play tennis, but women are very interested in a um, fashion more. So actually, I'm going to go back and I'll share the screen so you can see um, her tennis. All right, so here we go. So we just switched back. So her tennis is a is another example where I've targeted um, women's tennis players and I focus on apparel because that's where the money is in terms of um, um, you know it's not so much the rackets. I mean, but they care about how they look. And so um, this works well on Pinterest. Uh, but you can see that I've created a domain that is generic. I mean, it's easy to understand that her tennis, what it's about. But yet, it's not keyword dominant. And it, it can really cater. I found that uh, people are interested in, I can write about women's double strategies and use that content to attract uh, women that are that are interested in tennis double strategies, and then they end up clicking on outfits and new um, shoes and you know the other categories. So this is an expert authority site in the works here uh, for this market, and obviously based on trends, um, tennis peaks in the July month. That's it. That's when there's the most searches for tennis gear, clothing. Um, brackets, bags, shoes, etc. So what you want to do is when you create these sites is you want to create um, target markets that keeps you busy throughout the year. And so you can you can basically one of the things that I do is I follow target circular ads, Macy's circular ads, and I have stacks of them and I over time you could just see the what products sell. They've done all the market research. They know what products sell in every month. And so you can build uh, your site to sort of follow that trend. Health and fitness, big in the, in the month that we're in now, um, sort of tapers off. Outdoor living increases uh, after April. And then you get pool and summer stuff. This peaks in July. Then you move into back to school. So you have that space in the fall, as well as hunting. And then you move into the Christmas season, which is a lot of gifts. So, I mean, you could hit. And then you can look for evergreen markets, such as um, anything that's in health, wealth, or. Good. So you can see from a consumer market, you can do. Um, uh, a lot of cosmetics and a lot of, a lot of products in that space. So you can even create a beauty store. I actually have a beauty store um, in that space. So 
because I know people that say, hey, uh, makeup sells all the time. So, so that gives you uh, an opportunity to take a look at uh, Power Decom. And what I want to do is um, hmm. if there's any questions in the chat. Um, and find out where where's our um, there's McKinnon out there too. He's also monitoring monitoring chat. I don't see him here, so let's see if he's out there. <laughs> um, I'm gonna ping him. All right. Um, all right. So. I'm going to put in a couple things where you can you can be in touch. You can follow up with McKinnon. You can follow up if you have any questions. Uh, this is an open discussion. I'm also in McKinnon's group, so you can um, you can ask a question there. I might answer it. Anything about Empower Ecom, and especially if there's something that that because of the technical issues that we've had tonight, uh, if that's been something that's impacted you then it gives you an opportunity that we can continue discussion. The discussion doesn't have to end. And the sharing and the masterminding of what works in terms of affiliate marketing and Amazon, uh, you, can, um, you can continue to ask the questions and, and share, and we'll go from there. So in summary, we talked about uh, position your store as an niche authority site, and you want to provide a what I call a strategic marketing funnel. You want to provide an ability to um, have low price products, high price products, and something that wasn't really shown is uh, is ability to um, build a list. Let me give you, um, and I'm going to do a, one last screen share so you can show an example of uh, something that you could do. It's um, you, do, you can create a light box pop up, and there's some. And it's sort of an advanced level, but always willing to share. And uh, as we, I'll just do it here. I'm going to do a screen share back. And we'll wait for the controls to show up so that I can do screen share. All right. So, Store details. Um, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna switch to uh, another site that I have, maybe Comfort Gear. This is an evergreen market, and that I have an ability to um, collect email addresses. And so one of the things that I've done is I've created a uh, a, a free offer. They, they they can download this book. They can get. I have a mini course. They sign up, and of course, if um, if they want a special offer, they can click this, and a special offer thing will open up. So I've created multiple ways to uh, collect a lead, and then what I can do is I can create a follow up and build a relationship with that person, and have an opportunity to sell them other items. And obviously, in the, in the baby uh, market. You can do parenting courses that are higher, higher ticket, you know, like a, a video six CD set, and you can go on to ClickBank and maybe find um, sort of a, a ClickBank course that might pay fifty to seventy-five dollars commission um, for advanced uh, love and logic type of parenting strategy. So someone that has babies obviously will be interested in becoming a better parent. Um, well, I guess that's what we hope, <laughs> but we never know. Um, but I would say the vast majority of people want to be a great parent. And so they're always looking to learn. And so when you build a affiliate uh, expert site, such as uh, a baby store, you have that opportunity to do those advanced courses. And then obviously parents may want to uh, take vacations. They want to take family vacations. So another high ticket uh, back-end affiliate offer could be a 
a vacation club where you might make a thousand to two thousand dollar commissions. So really what I want to do is I want to expand your mind uh, with the ability to say okay it's not just about Amazon. What we're doing is we're leveraging Amazon but we're building our own authority and, and we just look at Amazon as, as, as a guest that comes in and it shares some products and as we build authority and we create content and then we start to bring in our own products that we want to sell, maybe we create our own book that we want to sell. Uh, we have the ability because we are market driven and we're creating a store around a target market, not product driven. And that's that's the big difference between my strategy and I've just created Empowered Ecom just to make it easy for people to do that. All right. So that being the case, um, I I am out of here. I, I wanted to respect the time. It's we've been on for a little over an hour, and I do appreciate um, you being here and, and hanging out. And uh, for our first webinar that we said, I mean, as McKinnon said in his emails, be the first. Uh, we actually have only um, brought in beta testers, a few here and there. McKinnon has beta tested, or he has an account, he can beta test it. Uh, so from that standpoint, we are really just getting started. So everything is priced, uh, what I think is, uh, is really low, because what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, people to try it and to see where it goes. And that's why we wanted to invite you to take a look at Empowered Ecom because it's just one of the tools out there. And obviously with the affiliate program built in, it could also be a, another income stream for you if you're interested to participate and, and be involved with us as we uh, continue to grow Empowered Ecom. One of the target markets that I'm looking at is people that are interested in blogging because the Empowered Ecom is built like a blog. Uh, but right off the bat, it trains people on how to create uh, income via Amazon affiliate marketing or eBay or even their own or in their own Kindle books. The idea is that um, you're a business, right? And you, we're, we're going to monetize your passion, and that's the focus of Empower Ecom. It's to empower you to uh, leverage your skills and your knowledge and your experience, and to create something that is is not a technical hurdle but it gets you there to say, hey, if you have any questions about you know, paddleboarding, I'm a paddleboard expert. Um, I, have a, you know, I have a friend that's interested in quilting. So they're a quilting expert, and they can, they can have a site all about quilting. My uh, father-in-law's uh, wife is a canner. I mean, she loves preserving everything. So we've created a site just for fun. I mean, she's over 70, and yet she has a blast building a site where she can talk about canning recipes and uh, jars and preserving and steamers and canners and all the stuff that's about that as well as all the different um, instruction books on canning as well as even back end gardening equipment because a lot of people that are into canning have their own garden so you can see how you can really create a really cool niche authority site in any little niche and I'm gonna close with one thing and, th and this is something I want to leave with you I, I know someone that has created 130,000 followers on Twitter. They are uh, high school football players. Okay, so he has a herd. He has a market, and when he wants some income, he just sends out a little tweet to that market and say, "Hey, I've created a new shirt, or I've created a new um, a new logo hoodie," and they. He uh, is earning $12,000 a month because he's created a, an authority site. He has created a following of 130,000 people that are interested in high school football and sports and motivation and all of that. So it doesn't have to be about making money online. It can be, it, it's really tied to your passion. Obviously, this guy, he's passionate about high school football. He is a member of his own market. And that uh, gives him all the advantage because he, he knows what the market is interested in and he can share the content and they eat it up. And that's really the idea here. And that's what I want to leave with you tonight, that you can go out there and you can think about your target market. You can think about where you want to be an authority. And as you plan your store, you can then think about the back end higher ticket items so that you can build... Uh, a higher commission and your average commissions on your store are higher and then you have a plan to follow up and build a relationship so that they come back and they buy more of the stuff you list as well as maybe join uh, a, a higher affiliate program that you're promoting etc 
So it gives you an ability. And then when you're ready to move on, you can say, anyone interested in buying my site? I've got this thing. I've built it out. I've got an audience. I've got a list of email addresses. I've built a relationship with these guys. And um, if you're interested, you can now sell it. It's a way better way to go. It's what the best internet marketers are doing. It's what I'm going to be doing. And so I just wanted to share that with you. And if you have any questions, you can find me online. You can find me in the group. But this is Brian Metzger signing off. I thank you again for having uh, sharing your evening with us. And um, you guys have a good night. All right? Talk to you later. Bye.